What's up, everybody? Troy Cartwright here. Welcome back to another episode of Ten Year Town. We've got a great interview for you guys this week. But before we do that, one small favor to ask of you guys. If you could go to tenyeartown.com, click on our YouTube page, and hit subscribe. It helps us out a ton, and we appreciate it. Thanks. Today's guest, we are joined by Haley Montgomery. Haley is the Director of Awards and Industry Relations at the Academy of Country Music, also known as the ACMs. If you have ever wondered how award shows work, how people are nominated, what the qualifications and criteria are for doing so, and how the winners are picked, you are going to learn so much from this episode. I was so curious as the nominations for the ACMs came out last week, how all of this works, and I learned a lot. I know you guys are going to learn a lot too, so without further ado, here she is, Haley Montgomery. I always start this thing off with the same question, which is how long have you been in town? You know, I, so I saw that on there and it's funny because, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to feed into the title, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> I've been here about 11 years. Okay. Um, I would say I've been fully working in the music industry, maybe like eight years. Okay. Depending on your definition of what counts. Sure. Where did you, where are you from originally? Huntsville, Alabama. Nice. Yeah. Did you, so did you go to school up here in Nashville or how did you, no. how did you get to Nashville? No. Um, so I went to Birmingham Southern, Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah. Actually just got noticed that school is closing, which is funny. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so I moved home. I did not know my direction at first. Um, I had gone to school actually like an art school Okay, that was a magnet program that like draw drew people from all over the city. Yeah. And I studied music there and, but I, I honestly hated music. Like I loved it and I hated it. I loved supporting it and I loved my friends who were creative, but I didn't want to do it. And I yeah. didn't understand what that was because I didn't know the industry was an option. Totally. It wasn't giving you life to like yeah. perform or whatever. Yeah. And it was like, it was musical theater, real talk. Like yeah. one of my best friends was in Hamilton. One of my other best friends was in Matilda and Wicked and like being in their classes, like they're so talented. I loved being with them. I loved being part of the productions. Yeah. I didn't want to sing. Yeah. But like I was drawn to it. So I still like got in there. Like somehow I mustered up enough like courage and a little bit of voice to get into these programs. Yeah. Don't ever ask me to sing in public again. <laughs> I hated it. But I just loved being around the energy there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. How did you, what was kind of like your first music business, music industry job? Yeah. Um, Okay. So I, I moved back to Huntsville after college, did not know what I was going to do. Um, and then honestly, I, I met my husband who worked in the music industry lightly. Um, he went to Belmont and he was doing merchandise. Gotcha. Um, and I just came up and, uh, visited him. We did long distance for a while. Um, and I wanted out of Alabama. So I came on up yeah. I worked at a boutique, had nothing to do with music, um, hated it, but I got management experience at a really young age, which yeah. I was super grateful for. And then uh, he was on the road full time doing merchandise. And so he had a girl artist looking for someone. And I was like, you know what? Like, let's do this. That sounds, I want to see the world. I'm in my 20s. Yeah. Um, and so I went on the road with Daniel Bradbury and did her merchandise and VIP services and basically anything I could get my hands on. Yeah. I truly like, I tell everyone get on the road as soon as you can. Like it was my music education. I learned so much about how the industry works just on 100%. those wheels, yep. like, and, and made such good connections and friendships I still treasure. So, um, that's kind of how I got my first taste of the industry. Yeah, that yeah. is like, that is some of the best advice that I would give someone to. Yeah. It's like, it's like on the, on the artist side or the band side, it's like get a van and just drive, play anywhere you can. Honestly, like, like it's funny how people come to Nashville to make it in music business. Yeah. And that is so important. I, I do think you have to have a foot here, right? But oh, absolutely. I also think you get so many more educational opportunities and get so much like 
life experience going to these towns that are hungry for your services. Like yeah. get the hell out of Nashville too. Yeah. So, and you learn how to like deal with a, like your traveling party, you know, it's oh. like tight spaces. Yeah. You got to figure out, yeah. you know, how to, how to make different personalities all work together. It's like such a good simulator for like, um, I found I'm really good at working with people now just from the experience of like managing three, you know, essentially managing, like I was the, the artist and the singer and I had like three or four band members, you know, and yeah. you know, they're kids and I was a kid too, Yeah, but somebody had to be responsible. But someone has to be the adult and you were yeah. the adult that day. I, I was, you know, had to be the adult more times than I wanted <laughs> to. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I learned a lot about dealing with people that way. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I, I did merchandise, right? So like I learned to count to 12 and anybody who has done merchandise knows what that means. Yep. Um, but, uh, I also got to see settlements at the end of the night. I got to see how a uh, fair and festival season works in this like nitty gritty part of the industry that has like a decent amount of money in it oh, that yeah. a lot of people, if you're not on the booking side or if you're not on the artist side, you might not know about, especially in your twenties. Yeah, absolutely. So how did you, tr I, I guess, transition from being on the road to, did you go straight to the ACMs? Like how did that, what was there some yeah. stops along the way? I mean, honestly, I think I would have stayed on the road a really long time, but it was, it was harder in my 20s as a female, like quite honestly, to get work. Like there were definitely like some discouraging conversations with companies I would go to. Gotcha. And so it it came to an end in that way. And then um, I got to go work for M Street, which only local Nashvilleians will still probably know what that is. But it was a big restaurant and entertainment group in town that owned Came Prime and like this strip of restaurants that everybody thought was the bee's knees back in the day. <laughs> um, and I did all their uh, VIP services and events. And that was really like me sort of shifting my knowledge of what I had learned on the road about like these large scale music events into that. Um, I quickly learned like I could go the rest of my life without talking to a bride. So like, I didn't want to do these private events. Yeah, I still loved music. Like anytime that, I will say that location, since it was so hot, we got to do a lot of after parties. I got to do Garth Brooks, um, entertainer of the year party. Like we were on a clause where we only threw the party if he won. So we're watching like the CMA awards waiting. And then like he won and I just yell for my staff, like go and we yeah. like get ready. And he's there in two <laughs> seconds. But like, so I got to be around it and that was cool, but it was just like not scratching the itch for me. And yeah. so, um, I then went to CMA. I did their strategic partnerships. Um, again, just using my little Jack of all trade kind of mentality that was developing. It was really helpful to learn how to get brands to buy country music and like, yeah have those conversations. And I just love talking to people about like, how can we all work together? And like, yeah. oh, you also have $100,000. That sounds cool. Like, let's work <laughs> with that. Um, so I really enjoyed that, that department. But again, um, I just found like I was going out more than most people around me and still wanted to like connect with the industry and like do more with those connections. And so um, I went to Opry to do their artist relations, uh, in March of 2020. Nice. Good timing. <laughs> Great timing. Such good timing. It was still really a good experience and I still love all those people. But uh, when everything went down, I uh, then texted Damon who had been, uh, stick with me through all these acronyms. Yeah. He was the CMO of CMA, but then he went to be the CEO of ACM. Gotcha. Um, and I texted him and was like, hey, I think this is coming to a close, you know, like, I love what you guys are doing. It's like a fresh take on the trade organization setup. Yeah. Um, let me know if anything comes open. And so when it did, he hit me up. That's amazing. Yeah. So you've been there a few, I, I'm like doing the math now on what year it is. Yeah. Yeah. Years. It's hard, it's hard to follow through the transition, but yeah, yeah I've been there like, uh, I did a little temp work at first, but like I count that. So about three and a half years. Amazing. Yeah. So I know I was like kind of getting excited driving over here because I like know obviously what the ACMs are, but like, <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> I've never really thought about how any of it works. Yeah. And so um, when I, when I, when this first kind of entered my head, like, I don't know, a month ago and I called Avery, my PR person, I was like, I want to talk her. to somebody at the ACMs because I just don't like, I don't know about it. And in the way that I, I don't know how it works. I mean, I don't think, I think a lot of people don't know how it works. I think they rely on us for a lot. And I think everyone wants to win an award, but like yeah. when I start answering questions about awards, people are like, oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Like wow. I, I, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see where this goes, where this conversation leads. But it's like, I think the first question I have is like, what is like the process for being nominated for, for like an award? Yeah. Like how does that work? Yeah. Um, so nominations, uh, the way that starts is through submissions, right? So okay. we open up submissions. Um, that is like a long drawn out process where they have to gather charting information and um, linear notes and a uh, headshot and links to different things and the highest charting date on what it was, anything. So people like Avery yeah. uh, will submit that. Um, I'm on speed dial during that time, sure. usually. Getting a lot of calls from publicists. A lot of publicists calls, a lot and... of calls. Um, it's, it's such an important time though. Like I think one of the hottest, hottest takes from <laughs> what people could get out of this that they're maybe not expecting um, yeah. is that there are categories you can be nominated in where you don't have to chart. Oh, gotcha. You don't. Um, and and I'll tell you, those categories are really long and I'm probably going to cause myself a nightmare right now by doubling them. <laughs> but, but I also think it's very important that people know, like if you have an artist who is not charting in a traditional way, but they're talented as hell and you think they're making a buzz within the industry, like you, you really need to read deeply into the qualifications and and pay attention to that and not be discouraged from oh I see from submitting yeah so you're saying like some people just think oh well this this artist hasn't been on the chart this year so they're not even eligible yeah when oftentimes they would be yeah absolutely That's fascinating absolutely I would have never thought about that yeah and I, I think most people don't I think uh you know like you just wait for like that that record-breaking year and yeah. like and that's true like they're it's voted upon by members who are definitely like the more they see a name you know it definitely helps your odds but yeah I also think good artistry wins and so I encourage people to take a look at that and make sure they're not like missing their entrance because that's the beginning Right. of becoming a nominee is that we can't do anything if you don't submit. Yeah. And so you get submitted mm -hmm. and then I guess there's like ballots, voting, yeah, there's, et cetera. There's submissions. Then we have a vetting process where we go through the board votes or board reviews everything that was submitted and gives like the green light on it. Um, our board, by the way, is 80 of the top professionals within the industry and go on our website and see who they are. Gotcha. Um, don't tell me, don't tell them I sent you there, but you know, that's where you can find them. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, from there, that turns into the first ballot. Um, and we pretty much include anything that qualifies on that first ballot. So let's say visual media of the year, which is one of those categories people should keep in mind. Yeah. Um, we'll get upwards of 200 submissions. Wow. And how many that. make it to the, the ballot? A lot of them. Really? Yeah. What is visual media? Is that like a music video? Yeah. So that this is one of those categories that we're like progressive. Right? What if I have a really viral TikTok? <laughs> it can be it. Yeah. Really? So, so we, okay. um, I wouldn't have known that. Yeah. We, we have a committee. It's, um, our awards voting and membership committee. And we basically look at the rules every year and we're like, yo, are we staying up on the times? Like, is this still relevant to yeah. the industry? And so it used to be music video of the year. Sure. And we had a bunch of conversations about it. And um, we were like, we need to be more open to all these new means coming in. Yeah. And so we changed it to visual media. It still has to be tied to an official track mm -hmm. and only one creative piece per track can be submitted. So like, sorry, Walker Hayes, but like great example, like yeah. a bazillion fancy like versions, like you're still going to have to pick what it is. I so see. like if you spent 
half a mil on a music video, you're still probably going to submit that. But I see. So you kind of got to pick one headline piece. Yes. But all the other stuff. Yeah. But serves it. It, it. It's a great opportunity for someone who is hitting really hard in the industry and didn't spend the money on an official visualizer. Yeah. You know, like if you have a really killer TikTok, counts. Dang. Yeah. Just got to pick one. You got to pick one. That's crazy. Yeah. I would have not known that at all. See, I'm learning something new. This is <laughs> this is exciting for me. I love I love learning like new things. So. I'm glad to hear it. I yeah. was like, this is going to be his most boring podcast. No. 110%. This but I'm glad this works. Great, it's already a great one. Um, <laughs> and so people are voting. Who 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 votes? Yeah, it's uh, the members. Okay. So we have over 5,000 members. Um bunch of different categories. It all spans country music industry. Gotcha. The rule of thumb I tell people to keep in mind is that the majority of your income comes from country music. If that's the case, yeah. then you most likely qualify to be a member. But it doesn't have to be what you think. Like some people might think of country music like it's not a box. If you're the stagehand who's making the majority of your money setting up a country music show, like chances are you probably qualify to be a member. Gotcha. So um, that that's who's voting you, on everything. Do the people like apply to become an ACM member? They do. And you just say like, here's what I do. And yeah. then somebody, somebody decides. Yeah, they have you... to give two references. Okay. I think that part's a little harder for people who are more on the fringe. Sure. Um, but I, with 5,000 plus, like... Yeah. You're going to know somebody. Somebody's going to know. I hope you're going to know. Yeah. Um, and you need two references. You fill out what you do, pick your category and describe it. And then we have, again, another review process. Like that's my unofficial job is yeah. just like review, review, review. So um, we typically have anywhere from 500 to 1,000 people apply every year. Gotcha. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And so once you're a member, you can vote. Mm -hmm. And there are, like you said, there's, so there's like a ballot. How many, how many ballots are there until the show? Or is that like, does it depend? No, it, it, it doesn't depend. Um, so there are two ballots okay. and then there is the, the final, the nominee ballot. Gotcha. Yeah. And across the board, each stage, it's the members voting. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. So even up to the show, even on the show. Yeah. It's like, it's who they voted for. Yeah. That's crazy. I know. I know. I, I, I like, you know, they read the the thing about who won the award. Yeah. And I've never really stopped to think and go, well, who decides? Well, I, I think <laughs> I think a lot of people don't think that. I think um, they're just like, wow, they won. Like everyone wants them. It's like, who who is everyone? But yeah. like, I love that it's the members um, because they are qualified and because they are in the industry. Like we love, love, love our fans. They're amazing. I think. I adore CMT for having all their fan voted stuff, but uh, there's a time and place where it's really nice to know that your peers are like, hey, I see you. Yeah, for and sure. And you're doing it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. That's really cool. Yeah. What's like, um, I don't know, you've been there three, th three years and some change. Like what's one of your like favorite moments from somebody winning or getting nominated? Do you have one yeah. that sticks out? I mean, you know, it's it's sort of a se selfish memory, like I'm gonna put myself <laughs> in the middle of it. But um, uh, one of my very best friends uh, writes a lot with Lainey Wilson. Her name is Trini Anderson, and um, she's, been, she's been on the pod. Has she? Oh yeah. Oh, I love her. We love um, her. She was with me for one of my very first ACMs. It was the last one that was in Vegas. Yeah. And she uh, stayed in my room and just was like my bro the whole time. It was great. And, um, it was really when Lainey was building yeah. like, and so I kind of got to see Lainey at an earlier stage than I get to see some of these artists that are blowing up quickly. And, yeah. um, whenever she won, um, new female, like, and then again, female, and then again, single, like it just, seeing Tranny break down and then yeah. seeing Lainey have this moment, see your whole team just be in awe. Yeah. Like it was one of those, like we're like screaming and hugging and I'm getting chills. And it just is definitely one of my favorite moments because uh, her Lainey and Lainey's team are, they're just so genuine. Yeah. And uh, they're one of those groups that you just like, you 
you feel so good about them winning. And so that that moment still like talking about it, I get chills because oh, it was awesome. just so fun. Yeah. Well, and it's cool to knowing more of the context now as well of like who's voting. So it's like, like we always say like this town loves Laney because because it does and yeah. we do. But it's like, oh, well, here's here's some proof like that it's that like this town like is all rooting for for Laney because we're they're voting for. Her, you yeah. Know? But she was still um, really humble. Like we uh, yeah. went to. So uh, Tranny was going to a writer's retreat where they ended up writing a lot of bell bottom country, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so her and Laney went to the airport lounge with me and we hung out and like she's just still so humble yeah. even after all those wins. Like she was like how did I win though? <laughs> like, how did I beat these people? Like they have such good numbers. And I was like, numbers are so important, but like people feeling like they've invested in you and they've wrapped their arms around you. Yeah. And like, they're a part of the story. Like that's hard to beat the TikTok numbers or anything else. Like, right. Cause they, they want to see you succeed. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. I love that. Um, what are some of the, like, obviously we're familiar with like the ACM and like the show. Oh, I know what I was going to, I know I had another question. So are they, uh, where do they take place this year? So they're taking place in Frisco, Texas. I had to think in my head if that was yeah. officially announced because we waited a bit on it. But oh, gotcha. yeah, so it's in Frisco, Texas. Uh, we're back at the Star, okay, um, which is the training facility for the Dallas Cowboys. I'm from Dallas. I know. I know I the saw Star. that on your bio. Yeah. So you have to come. It's I, so I exciting. Go. You got to uh, go. And I've never, I've actually never been to the Star. And I'm like a lifelong tortured Dallas Cowboys Are fan you? as well. So I know I would love it. Oh and my God. We would be on the grass that they practice it, on. Like it's that's also, where it is. It's also crazy because it's probably 12 minutes from where I grew up. Yeah, but it's also changed so much. Like I, It has. I don't know. Like I'm not like... I grew up in Frisco, but <laughs> like when I go there, there's just so much construction. You can tell everything's just new and shiny and beautiful. Yeah. And it looks like it just sprung up out of the sea. Yeah. Um, but it, it's such a cool town. And the coolest thing about doing it there, I mean, I've, I only got to go to Vegas once, so I, I don't have a wealth of comparison, but um, we take over the town. Yeah. Right. So like you're walking around and it's not like Vegas. We're like, we're one of like 20,000 conventions happening. Like, Great people watching, but yeah. we are definitely not the shining star. Um, right. Frisco like totally has taken us in and we take over every hotel, every restaurant, every aspect and you, it's impossible to not run into people. It's so fun. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. The networking has got to be unreal. Unreal, but it's there. also like, it's like spring break for the music industry. Like everybody <laughs> yeah. kind of has their hair down. Some people a little too loose, but you know, yeah. we appreciate it. We, it's nice to have that different look. No um, doubt. so it, it is networky, but it's not like the networky where like you, you need to get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like a little slower pace than being in like a Las Vegas or something like that too. So a little bit, hope, yeah. hope, depends how you roll, but yeah. It's true. <laughs> Um, so outside of the, like the show and like the, I guess like how, when the show's in, is it in April? So the show, I should definitely say this. Yeah. The show is May 16th. May 16th. Uh, tickets are on sale now. Okay. Through the ACM website, gotcha. acmcountry.com. Um, and, and like how far back do, like when are there like when is the the first ballot like when is voting for that and oh like gosh. how does and I don't want to put you on the spot no too you're much. fine we 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 finally got it within the calendar year like there was a time when I first came on that me and my boss were calling each other over Christmas because that's when we launched it and it was like such a nightmare yeah. um we have gotten it where the the eligibility is truly 2023 okay for the awards and so submissions start like. We welcome people back from the holidays and we're like, and get your submission in. Yeah. Like it's like Jan 3. Awesome. Um, and then the first ballot will go later that month. And then um, I'm not going to give all the other dates because I'm going to mess them up. But um, the final ballot is launching April 15th. Gotcha. Yeah. So if you're a member, you can vote. If you're a member, you better vote. Don't want to hear <laughs> any complaints. Get yeah. out there and vote. Yeah. Got to vote. Um what other kind of stuff does that like does the ACM do sort of outside of like the award show? 
Yeah. Um, How are they involved with the, we're big on community here on this oh, podcast. So. I love that. Yeah. Love it. Um, so we have a philanthropic arm, ACM Lifting Lives. Um, they are so integral to the industry. Uh, what I really love about them is that they're able to assess needs as they come. They're definitely focused on mental health right now. Gotcha. That's a huge piece for them. Um, but uh, previously, during COVID especially, they gave out millions to people who were unemployed. Um, you basically reached out and said, hey, I was touring, I'm not touring. Yeah. I can't pay my bills. And they took those people in. Like wow. hardcore, it was the most that I've heard cohesively that a group was able to do for the industry. And we're really, really proud of that. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And now we're focused on not the aftermath of COVID, but, you know, like what we learned from there, right, is just like uh, the music industry can rock your brain, you know? Oh, yeah. And so. It's, uh, it's like I always say about the music business, like love the people love it all but like the business itself will just like it can it can beat you up pretty yeah good, yeah you know? it can go from really cool to like ick or something real yeah. fast and so um they are now focused really on mental health and so making sure that the the industry continues to stay healthy and they Amazing. have um you can go on their website and learn about reaching out if you are someone in need um or if you just want to see what resources are available they're really great about that um but we're, we're very proud of Lifting Lives. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, and then we're, we're huge in diversity efforts. I would be remiss to not mention our Level Up program, which is run by Courtney Tony. Um, and Level Up basically identifies like the next leaders of the industry. And uh, we have those people come in and learn about different areas of the industry that are lacking diversity yeah. wise or um, just just spots that could be lifted up and sure. they do that over the course of a year. And then after that year, they spend the next year coming up with a project to help um, shed light or help encourage those areas. So the very first year we did it, they came up with another program we do called on ramp um, where we have 20 African American participants who actually receive a monthly stipend uh, so that they can focus on their art or their career. Yeah. They also get uh, three mentors in the industry that meet with a monthly. Very cool. Um, and it's, it's just, it's called on ramp because the goal is to bridge the gap. Right. So. Well, it's the hardest part is getting started. Yeah. And like, you know, and money, it's I mean, money. You gotta it, live. You gotta pay your rent. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, it's just like, it's kind of, uh, expensive to get started in the music business. You gotta, you gotta have super expensive. Yeah. Like it's, and you know what? It, it shows the, the diversity issues because unfortunately it tends to be like, I don't want to say names cause it will be someone in the industry, but like Joe Schmo, yeah. whose daddy struck it rich in like gold right. and went to state college and they get to come and be an assistant somewhere making like 10 bucks an hour. Like, yeah, that that's who gets those first steps. So the goal is to kind of help address some of the underlying issues instead of just saying like, we should do better, yeah. you know, like trying to really do something about yeah, it. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I love that. Um, all right. One more kind of procedural based question okay. for you. Do you have to be like a, um, like a signed artist to be eligible for an award or if, can you meet the criteria like as like, cause I know that like there's a, um, a shift happening where mm -hmm. the, like there's more independent artists now yeah. or people are able to get further. Yeah. Um, so can people be eligible for certain awards without yeah. a label? There is no rule about that. Gotcha. Um, we do have charting specific, so that's yeah. something to keep in mind, but, uh, the charts more and more are not necessarily swayed by that. Yeah. Um, specifically, we look at country air check. So it's a media based chart. Um, the top 50 in that really uh, sway a lot of our eligibility. And then um, Billboard Hot Country, which uh, I'm really glad we include that one as well because that takes in consumption, that takes totally. in streaming, that takes in all kinds. And so we get a lot 
more um, diversity from that chart as well. Yeah, because you can, I mean, it's got to be a big song, but you can chart on that. Yeah. People are charting on that completely independently. Yeah. Which is crazy. It's crazy. It's really cool to see. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just like, it's changing. Yeah. I don't know what it all means. I know. But it's and exciting. I love our label partners. Like they do great, great work, but yeah. it, it's cool to see like, I mean, this is something that the youths have brought us. Like <laughs> yeah. you have TikTok, you have all these different avenues now. Everybody can make their own like aesthetic and vibe and path. And it's it's cool to see um, all the different streams of country that are coming in. Yeah. Well, and it probably allows you guys that like the ACMs to be more responsive to Because some of these things are happening so fast. Oh, so these, fast. These like artists are getting launched faster than like, yeah. like I can think of a few examples of people that I'm like, oh, these are like established stars that didn't, weren't even on the radar like 18 months ago. Yeah. Which is insane. It's insane. So. I mean, definitely it's, it's a cool time. And I also hope all of those people have really good systems around them because yeah. again, it's a fast ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Life comes at you fast yeah. for sure. Um, so what, uh, advice do you have? Like you've had such a, an interesting sort of career trajectory yourself. If, yeah. if somebody wants to, we talk a lot of, to a lot of songwriters on here and a few, we've talked to a few publishers, but I think there is a whole other world of like music industry jobs, Yeah, you know, that are not just publishing or songwriting. So like, what kind of advice would you give to somebody that wants to be in the music industry? Like where's a, where's a good place to go, to go look in or yeah. some steps they can take? I mean, again, I say, get your butt on the road. Yeah. Um, make sure that you are willing. I mean, definitely take, make money and take care of yourself. Don't sell yourself out, but be willing to sell merchandise. Don't be too good for it. Um, don't be too cool. Don't be too cool. Like, yeah. I think a lot of um, younger folks coming into the industry have this like idea of what success looks like and they aren't really seeing like all the steps that lead up to that. And that's why I try to be honest about like working a boutique and all these weird steps that came in to play Yeah. because I, I think where I am now, I'm very proud of and like I did jobs in the past that weren't on that trajectory, you know, but I learned so much and I would not be able to do my job without them. I think the biggest thing is just having the grit and the tenacity to do it and then continue to grow the skills that, you know, will lead your yeah. future goal. Like I knew I wanted to keep connecting with people, keep growing who I knew in the industry. And I did that on the side, no matter what, but I also sold brand partnerships to Chevy, you know, like yeah. that's, that's part of the whole package. Yeah. To be willing to like do. Yeah. Do get your feet on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. It was when I first started, man, it's so many random jobs. Yeah. I was a wedding singer. Yeah. I was walking dogs. Yeah. I was like, uh, answering the phones, like a computer repair yeah. place. You know, I was just doing anything that was to flexible survive. enough. Yeah. To survive. And then also it was like, oh, well, if I do this then I'll have time to network or write. For me, it was like, I just wanted to write songs. Of course. But I needed, you know, to eat. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. I'm sure. So walking dogs it was, you know. Yeah, I'm sure <laughs> Tranny talked to you about that, her yeah. pop stars. I know, it was crazy. We kind of had this this oddly similar. Uh, yeah. Because, yeah, she had her own. And she was running her own company, which is even more like. Crazy. Badass, yeah, know? honestly, yeah. that's how we met is I was doing these VIP services for M Street. And well, my husband wrote with her. He used to be a songwriter, gotcha. but also um, I was putting together these VIP packages for this private club no one remembers anymore called Citizen. And she was my dog girl. Oh, yeah. Like somebody I, needs their dog set. Yeah. She had I, it. I brought her in as like the industry partner because I knew like she could handle it. And um, and we got really close through that because I was just like so in awe of like her putting this together while also like it's a 10 year town and she definitely has put in her time, but she also like no made strides fast because that girl, no one works harder. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, I got one more question for you in this yeah. one. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of this. This is like the family alliance in music. Yeah. Did that just start? So no, it actually started uh, like 
a little over two years ago. Okay. Um, it seems like I've all of a sudden in the last <laughs> yeah. week seen it everywhere yeah. on social media. So, uh, yeah, it, it basically started, uh, because as I was coming up in the industry, um, I just really, I wasn't having the mentors I needed to show me that it was possible to have a family mm -hmm. and still pursue my life. And, um, and so I was like, I remember even just like applying for like the Opry job and being like, if I get this, maybe that means I don't have kids, you know, like maybe wow. that, that, maybe that's the sign. Yeah. And so, um, COVID really taught me like, no, like there, there's no way, like I want kids and I'm going to figure this out. And I saw Jackie Jones who works for RIAA and took her out to eat. And she thought I was like, um, you know, it was like a typical, like getting to know her job thing. And I was like, love your job. That seems great. How do you post about your kid online and still be a badass at work? Wow. And, um, I also like on the side had gathered, um, uh, insight from 20 different music industry companies about their benefits for family leave. And it was discouraging. And so I showed that to Jackie and she was like, this is crazy. Wow. And so she brought in, um, Margaret Hart and we, all had a heart to heart and fam kind of just naturally fell out from that over some biscuits. Like we'd call our meetings, biscuit meetings. Yeah. And, um, we just decided we needed more mentorship for the industry. We needed more visibility of what having a family could look like. So people aren't so scared to even think about it. And also um, give the tools that if someone is willing to have a conversation with their company about like better benefits, that they have starting talking points on addressing that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and it, so we did that uh, back before I was pregnant, been pregnant, had my kid. ACM has always been amazing and uh, very supportive. So I'm very lucky to be there at this season of my life. Um, yeah. But uh, still very passionate about this mission and remembering times when I wasn't in a place like that. And so um, we decided we've talked about so this story and this group with so many people individually, like there was so much buzz behind the scenes. Um, but we were talking to people who already had kids. Yeah. And and that's great. And it, I, their support means so much. But like I wanted to make sure we were getting the story out to people who need this encouragement and need this connection. And so we just reached out to a few of those key people and said, like, hey, would you be willing to post about your family? Yeah. Like um, no real direction, just like kind of what would you want to would you have wanted to hear as your younger self thinking, could wow. I have a kid? Yeah. Um, or, or if you, we also represent anybody caring for like an elderly parent or family member as well. So just it, anything you wish you could have heard from an outside industry member going into those situations, what would that look like? And we, we thought we'd get like maybe, I don't know, like 10 posts. We ended up getting almost 50 posts. Wow. Um, and they were, from people I have so much crazy respect about that uh, it, it was mind blowing. And I honestly think it's just a reflection of a hunger in our industry to have this conversation. Like I would love for fam to take the credit. Fam shouldn't because it is, it, we are just a mirror of the topics of conversation happening bec behind closed doors every day. And I think everyone is ready to start saying those conversations louder and providing support. So yeah. I definitely, my biggest like thing with fam and what I want to get out to people who are in a situation where they need that kind of support, like music industry is a lifestyle and it's like, it gives so much purpose and it gives so much energy. But if it is a lifestyle, you better freaking make sure you like the life you're building with it. Yeah. Like, you can get so much drive from what you're doing at work, but you are going to get your stability and your calm and your fulfillment from what you have behind the scenes. And that's something that you need to give yourself space to think about. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you. It's very inspiring. I, uh, you know, 
I'm looking down that road myself. Yeah. Of just like trying to start a family and like, it's like, it's scary. It's so scary. Cause I'm just used to, you know, my life the way it is. And like yeah. my schedule is crazy. Yeah, and, and, and that's okay though. Like, yeah. I think that's the biggest thing is like, um, you know, like we always need more males posting, but I will say like the, <laughs> the guys who are involved, like, and the girls that are like on the songwriter and artist side, like it is not a traditional parent right. role. Right. It's different. It's different. But it's super doable. Yeah. They have great kids. They have a happy family. Like it, it is a possibility if it's something that's going to make your life even better. Yeah. Yeah. It's something I think about a lot. Just it's like, okay, this is sort of like something I just had to figure out yeah. how to do it. My wife works full time as well. Not in the music industry, but you know, it's like, I'm just gone. Yeah. You know, seven nights a week yeah, or, or a, a month, I should say, you know, or sometimes more. And it's like, okay, well, we'll, we'll figure it out, you know, yeah. but it's scary. Yeah. And it makes me, um, I think a lot of people don't realize that for a lot of people in the, in music industry jobs, we tend to have families later. Yeah. Um, and it's probably because we're like trying to figure it out. Totally. You know, it just takes longer. I mean, and and I love that about our generation. Like we go out and we live life in like, you know, no regrets. Like yeah. it, it's a great <laughs> style, but like also you have to be realistic about your timelines and you have to have these conversations. And I just think like the more examples you get of what it could look like, the more you see yourself doing it. Yes, and so absolutely. we, as far as like launching publicly, like with this campaign and everything, we were like put it off for a bit just because we were like, should we have money to give out? Should we have a like we need like a next step? And then we finally came to like, you know what? Like this started because like I needed an example. Yeah, and like that's what we need to provide. We need to provide these stories. Like we want to do a lot. We want to give grants. We want to help fill gaps. But in the meantime. The biggest thing I want to provide is just some freaking examples of how this could potentially look for you one day. Yeah, which is huge. And I mean, that makes so much sense. And that's um, in, a, in a different way, but that's sort of the purpose of this podcast has always been to show people the tell people stories of how they got into the music industry so that they realize like, oh, there's just other ways. Yeah. There's a million different ways to like make it. Yeah. And to make it happen. And to be successful. Yeah. I think that's so important to remember because like so many people like have this vision of what success is and who's successful. And I can tell you, I had that when I was younger. And now that I have gotten to where I am and I've met some of those people and worked with some of those people, they're not all happy. And yeah. in my opinion, if you're not happy, you're not successful. I don't really care what your title is. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here. So I've learned so much and uh, I, I hope, really appreciate it. hope it wasn't the most logistical, boring No, I, I, I think it's people are going to love this. It's really interesting. So. Okay, good. All right. That's it. That's the pod. See you later. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Ten Year Town. If you're still listening, you must have liked it. So we hope that you will leave us a rating or review on Apple or Spotify or give us a subscription on uh, YouTube. It's all free. Don't cost you nothing. But uh, we appreciate you being here. And uh, thank you for supporting the Tenure Town community. See you next week.